Hello, welcome again to our next installment on our video series covering Unified Communications version number 9. Today we're going to talk about virtualizing voice or taking your Unified Communication infrastructure and running it virtually. So, what is this? What am I talking about? Well, in order to understand that, let's look at where we were pre-virtualization. So, assuming I've got a Cisco Unified Communications environment, I've got a call manager server, communications manager, running on an MCS server. Okay. For my Unity, my voicemail, I've got a Unity or a Unity connection also running in an MCS server. I may have a present server running on an MCS box, and I may have a contact center. So that is four servers to run those four applications. Now let's say I want to make them redundant, right? If one fails, I want something else to take over for it. So in order to do that, I've got to duplicate this. I need another call manager server. I need another Unity server. I need another presence server. And I need another contact center server. So what does that mean? That means to run these four applications in highly available mode, I need eight servers. That's kind of a problem. How do we get around that? We virtualize them. So if I'm going to virtualize them, how do we get around that? I can take a couple of servers, let's say uh, Cisco C-Series servers, rack mount servers, and I can run call manager under VMware as a session, Unity as a session, Presence as a session, and Contact Center. Up here, I can run the same exact thing. So what does this mean? Well, what this means is I've gone from an eight server environment to a two server environment. I'm running the same amount of applications, I've got the same amount of fault tolerance, but I've reduced the amount of servers that I need. I can run these guys under VMware. Cool. Why would you want to do this? There's a couple of reasons. Let's say that your existing environment is based on UC7. UC7 today is end of sale. So let's say that in your contact center world, you decide, you know, I've got 50 agents, things are going good, I just hired 10 more people, I need some more agent licenses. You can't buy those today. Everything in the UC7 world has been end of life, so end of sale. So in order to add those agents, my only option is to upgrade. When you start looking at upgrades, we start looking at, if I'm going from 7 to say 9, what are the server requirements in 9 versus 7? As I'm sure you're aware, every time a new release of software comes out, there are more features and functions in that software. Well, that implies a bigger impact on your hardware. So the first question you'll need to ask is, on these MCS boxes that you currently have, will they support nine? Maybe, maybe not. But that's one of the things you want to check. If these boxes will not, this is a really good fit. You're going to have to change your hardware. It would make no sense to buy eight more servers when you can buy two. That's one of the reasons why you want to do that. You also want to look at your boxes themselves. Let's say they will support it. Where do they stand on end of sale and end of life and end of support? So things that you want to think about along those lines. Other reasons you may want to look at doing this. In this world, I said I have eight servers. That means I need rack space for eight servers. That means I need power and cooling for eight servers. In this world, I've got two. So I'm a greener solution when I go to a virtualization world. I've also got greater disaster recovery options. Within VMware, we do have additional features such as vMotion. If I want to move things around, I've got that as an option. Other things that you may want to think about along those lines. In this world, my applications were tied to that specific hardware. If you have an MCS box, it was spec'd out for the application that you're going to run on. This world doesn't work that way. This world is VMware. The hardware underneath has to have an aggregate to support the applications on top, but it's not a one-to-one -one mapping. So I'm no longer tied to a physical piece of hardware per application, or physical requirements per hardware, I should say. Next thing to think about, driver for that, is SmartNet costs. I've got eight servers I'm hanging SmartNet on over here. That's a hefty bill. 
Over here, I've got two servers I'm hitting SmartNet on. So I do have a cost reduction from a, from a SmartNet perspective. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's talk about how do we do this. Well, a couple things you need to think about. So when we talk about virtualization, we're talking about VMware. So VMware is the only hypervisor supported by Cisco Voice today. So once I get past that one, I start looking at what hardware can I run this on? So think about taking a real-time application and making it virtual. There are some considerations there. So my real-time application has to be real-time. That means these boxes need to be able to scale to it and support the services needed. Services meaning CPU, memory, uh, throughput on your NIC, throughput on a SAN if you've got one, things along those lines. So when we start looking in that direction, we start, we ask, well, what can I run it on? In a Cisco world, they've got a C-series server. C-series means rack mount. In that world, these, for example, would be a C-series, like a C220, for example, that I can run multiple applications on. Where do you use that? If I've got a, a, a plan to virtualize my voice, and only my voice, this makes a lot of sense. One server, four applications, I'm golden. Right? What if I want more than just my voice? What if I want to do my voice and say VDI or server virtualization? I need more virtualization or I have more virtualization needs. How do I address that? That one really comes into play with Cisco's, with Cisco's B series servers. And let's talk briefly about those. In a B-series server world, I have two fabric interconnects. that come down to a chassis. And I put blades in my chassis. Okay. What is, why do I do this? What does this buy me? So one of the things that Cisco's done in a server world is they've taken all the brains out of the physical server itself. The physical server becomes memory and CPU. Basically, they're compute nodes. They do what they're told. The brains for that live up here in service profiles. So in the fabric interconnects, I can run 10 gig links down to my chassis. My servers can share those 10 gig links. Those, those links can be Ethernet traffic, management traffic, fiber channel traffic, whatever it is we need to push through to that compute node. By putting a service profile up here, I can easily move my servers around. If I want to move one from here to here, or here to here, or I want to add another chassis. Another chassis is sheet metal and power supply. Then I take another compute node, memory and CPU, place it in here. He's now part of my overall management. If I want to move a process from here to here, that's simple. The brains live up here, I move it down. So if I want to virtualize my voice, I can put, say, voice on this blade, this blade, this blade, and this blade, depending on how many applications you have. I might use this one for VDI. I might use this one also for VDI. This one might be for uh, server virtualization. I can start mixing and matching my virtualized appliances, whether it's a voice app or a data app, email, whatever it is that you have that you want to virtualize, and still have that one single point of control. Does that make sense? So I can go with a C-series rack mount. I can go with a B-series. And in that case, I'm implying more than just voice. Or I can go with a specs-based model. So let's talk about that for a minute. What do I mean by specs-based? Cisco was getting a little bit of pushback of, you know, I already have a VMware farm. I already have all the things that I need. Why can't I run it on my servers? That's, that's a fair question. So Cisco came out with the idea of specs-based. If you have extensive experience with virtualizations, virtualization, server, and storage, you can use your existing environment, provided it meets these specs. So what are those specs? Let's draw some of that out. So from a server perspective, I can be Cisco UCS, 
which are the two that we talked about. I can be HP or I can be IBM. Those are the three server types that Cisco supports today. Within those servers, there's specific Intel P CPUs. And in this case, I'm going to say go to their, their website and get the latest list because that does update as processors change. But know that there are certain ones that they support that the applications will run through. Note with virtual CPUs, in this world for voice, I cannot oversubscribe a CPU. Again, we're a real-time application. I can't share a uh, CPU resource with another program. And if I get choked out on the CPU, I don't have enough process to run my voice, my voice suffers. So oversubscription of CPU is not allowed in the spec space model. Other thing that I need out of a spec space model, I need two gig of memory, physical memory for ESXi itself, and then the sum of the UC apps. Right, so again, I cannot oversubscribe, so I have to dedicate this memory. I need VMware memory, and then I need to look at the apps that I'm going to run. Am I going to have call manager and Unity and presence and contact center? What do these applications require? Sum that, add 2 gig, that's the memory that I need. Does that make sense? Okay. Another thing that I need on here, uh, do memory dedicated. I also need vCenter. So if I've got all of these individual applications running on my own HP, IBM, I need something to control those VMware sessions to manage those. That's vCenter. So vCenter is a requirement. All right, other things that you want to think about. Um, I.O. So if I've got I.O. boards and adapters in my servers, they have to comply to the VMware hardware compatibility list. That kind of makes sense, right? Goes without saying. Uh, HBAs, fiber channel, two gig or higher, right? So if I want fiber channel connections, two gig or higher. If I've got an Ethernet connection out from my NIC, one gig or higher. Okay. Let's say that I'm doing a uh, Converge network adapter, right? I want to run uh, a CNA or I want to run iSCSI or I, I want to run some kind of Ethernet protocol from a SAN perspective, 10 gig or higher. Okay, I need to make sure that my SAN traffic can run over this. In a UC world, I really care about IOPS. How quickly can I read and write? Again, think that this is real-time traffic. Real-time traffic doesn't have much tolerance and delay if I'm going to buffer it. So I, my IOPS need to be able to handle the load that we're about to put on. Does that make sense? Okay. So understanding your IOPS and your disk space requirements and what your integration into your SAN is highly important. So in a nutshell, I have got a C-series option. In a C-Series option, it's custom-made for voice. You order the server, we can scale up to X amount based on the server that we bought. B-Series, a little more flexible. I can connect in a SAN, and I can mix and match voice, VDI, uh, virtual, server virtualization. Specs-based has to be Cisco, HP, IBM only. Intel CPU, approved list. Memory, I need it to be dedicated. I need to have vCenter. I can do fiber channel or I can do iSCSI. Fiber channel minimum is a 2 gig. SAN integration for iSCSI is going to be a 10 gig. And then my NIC has to be a minimum of 1 gig. Does that make sense? Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.